Hello and welcome to yet another philosophical improvisation. Today we start with the uh, new um, experience, which is the explanation of this book, What is Philosophy, by Gilles Deleuze and Félix Gattari. Uh, this is the translation by Graham Birchall and Hugh Tomlinson. And the idea, I don't know if I will um, achieve it, but at least I will start, is to slowly read the book, uh, to um, produce a philosophical reading of the book, and at the same time, an introduction to the contemporary validity of the question of what is philosophy. So I will be reading also directly from the French when there is some doubts or questions about the um, English translation. So they start in the um, introduction by saying that the question, what is philosophy, which might sound obvious, is actually a question that was not so often asked and that um, comes, as they say, late in life. By that they mean that perhaps the philosopher is in the first decades of his or her philosophical life preoccupied with um, his agony, his combat um, in the territory of concepts, but also in the territory of existence. And also occupied, as we will see, with the selection of the um, ingredients that will allow him to elaborate a few concepts of his own, ideally, at least carrying his signature. So there is this sentence, it is a question, what is philosophy, is a question posed in a moment of quiet restlessness at midnight. Now this might be heard as a reference to Hegel, who said that wisdom is uh, a posteriori, the famous um, the bird of knowledge that only raises um, after the battle, after the events. It was asked before, that question, it was always being asked, but too indirectly or obliquely. It is also the case that philosophy has become an institutional discipline, right? So before that, philosophers like Descartes, Leibniz, or even Plato, they didn't really have to justify a, uh, a position. What is it that you're doing as a lecturer of philosophy, for example? No, they just followed the uh, passion of interrogation, but also of uh, meaning giving. So what is philosophy is also a question that is determined by how philosophy has become today, not only institutionalized, but also um, tr used transform uh, 
violated sometimes, violated um, into some sort of a communicational device or a fancy device. Um, uh, and the Leuze and Guthrie uh, lament the uh, use of concept, of the term concept, which is the, the really the uh, the main concept of philosophy. Philosophy deals with concepts, and they're very sad that the term of concept is used today in marketing or, or advertising or, or design. We'll come back. So, in order to ask what is philosophy, we need to be sober. Sober enough. If you have too much desire to do philosophy, you cannot yet ask what is philosophy. And of course, in a way, it's more important to do philosophy. Right? And. and we can ask what it is later and in fact what they're doing here is that they're doing philosophy in asking what it is and this is what we are doing right now slowly There are times when old age produces not eternal youth, but a sovereign freedom, a pure necessity in which one enjoys a moment of grace between life and death, and in which all the parts of the machine come together to send into the future, a feature that cuts across all ages. Tissin Turner Mooney. So this is the first introduction of what Deleuze and Gattari called conceptual characters, personnages conceptuels in French. And this is important because it introduces the notion of embodiment. We will see that philosophy is embodied. Right? Uh, the philosopher is the friend of wisdom meaning someone who has an emotional relation with abstractions think about it this is not very common right people are usually enmeshed intertwined in personal relationships with other people and that's actually, I would argue, what makes human life so difficult is that most people don't elevate themselves to the concept. Um, and then, of course, once you elevate yourself to the concept, you need to return to uh, the singularities, the differences that make the uh, diversity of life but you need to make this movement uh, in order to detach yourself from um, misunderstandings rather than illusions likewise in philosophy Kant's critique of judgment is an unrestrained work of old age which his successors have not, still not caught up with, all the mind's faculties overcome their limits, the very limits that Kant had so carefully laid down in the works of his prime. And we'll stop with this idea because I want to keep every um, unit uh, around 10 minutes or under 10 minutes. If this idea that the philosopher doesn't know where he's going, doesn't know what the uh, elaboration of the concepts are going to uh, produce uh, even uh, in his own um, 
cognitive world and we can say that Kant only becomes Kant um, not only at the end of his life but also as he is interpreted as the concepts that he has elaborated um, make their journey across the world so we'll stop here for today um, hopefully we will continue tomorrow as you see this is a slow reading um, we'll see where it takes us it is an improvisation see you tomorrow